Okay. I'm going to make sure we're streaming live on Facebook in the McDonough Small Business Connections group. Let's see how this looks over here. I hope everybody's having a wonderful, um, this is Thursday, right? Is this Thursday? This is Friday. No, it's Friday, April. Come on. We are Friday. <laughs> yes, here we are. Okay, so we are live. I see it going. That's wonderful. Hey, everybody. I'm April Brum. I am one of the admins here at the McDonough Small Business Connections Group, and we are so excited to have Larry Levine. He wrote a book called Selling from the Heart, and he also has a podcast. Now, not everybody's book is going to look like this. <laughs> I was able to meet Larry in August of last year at Salt Lake City. Um, we were at a convention there for a company that we both love. So, I just wanted to have somebody that has Larry's experience, has his caliber of being able to make that connection. I think what's happening here is our group grew very rapidly. We have close to 1,600 people in our group now, but these are small business owners, and um, being able to connect and form that sense of community is really what Larry does best. So Without any further ado, the top 100 sales books of all time includes Larry Levine's Selling from the Heart. Have at it, Larry. We're so happy you're here. Oh, no, this is awesome. It's not bad. Hey, April, I'm still pinching and poking myself after being number 56 and Selling from the Heart's only been out 15 months. So it's kind of cool. But I, you know, I really appreciate you having me on. Um, selling from the Heart means a lot to me. And I think before I get going is I wanted whoever's watching in the group that's watching, I really appreciate you having me on. And if there's any comments or any questions, you know, you can shoot them over to April. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to take everyone back a few so you understand how selling from the heart really came to be and why, because I think everybody has aha moments in life. And whether that be as a small business owner, or whether that be as a salesperson, you name it, we have those moments in time where, quite frankly, um, a difficult moment happens or we get slapped across the face or we get a dose of humble pie thrown at us that unfortunately we have to eat. And that humble pie that I ate was probably about 25 years ago. And I came out of corporate sales. I was selling office technology. I lived north of Los Angeles, California. So I was selling office technology into Fortune 500 companies in downtown Los Angeles most of my life. And it was about 20, 25 years ago, I was sitting in front of a chief financial officer. And this chief financial officer and his company was on my target list of accounts. So it was a dream list, right? I had this dream list of accounts that I wanted to go after. It took me a few years to get into this to where I actually had that first appointment with the CFO. And I was in my suit. I was the number one salesperson in my company. And I walk in and we do this small meet and greet and we shake hands. And obviously everyone's posturing for position. So we sit in the appropriate spots and I start asking questions and I start taking notes. And about five, six minutes into the meeting, he goes, Larry, oops, stop, time out, time out. And I'm like, oh, what's going on? I'm mentally going, what's going on here? And he stopped the meeting, he stopped me dead in the track and he goes, this is over, basically. And I go, interesting. And I, part of me just wanted to get up. So I kind of closed my notebook and I started to get up off the chair and something inside me says, you know what, Larry, turn this into a learning moment. And before I go any further, I want to stop here. And everybody who's on this call, I want you to think about that for a moment. Every difficult situation that you all have, whether that be with a customer or whether that be with a future customer or a prospect, we can all learn from it. And I always say that we got to be able to eat critique and vulnerability every single day for breakfast. And that's what made me, me. So I, I sat back down, I tore off my notes, got a fresh sheet of paper, and I said, his name was Paul. And I said, hey, Paul, can you really help me understand why you just said what you said? And he says, hey, Larry, you, you know, you walked in here. You were the third person. You're the third salesperson that I've spoken to in the last week. So obviously he was in the market to replace his office technology. And he said, you've asked the same set of questions, canned questions all about you, positioning your company, how great you are. And I couldn't take it anymore. And you just happened to be at the the right place, but wrong time for you. And I said, you know, hey, I'm really sorry. 
but help me understand what would you do if you were me? Now, keep in mind, I was a seasoned sales veteran. And I want people to realize that we have to be able to ask those questions that we might think are difficult to help us become better at what we do. And for 45 minutes, I never said a word. I just took pages upon pages of notes. And what I got from that meeting was this, if we don't place our prospects and our clients up on a silver business platter and show them how much we care and we're there to truly help them and make it about them, then we're gonna get called out on the carpet all the time. And that was my aha moment. And we shook hands and long story short, he ended up being a customer for a long time. In fact, he lives in the city that I live in. We still laugh about it this day. I tell that story uh, you know, in greater length, but for the purpose of this call, I, I'd keep it short. I use that as an example because it was then that I went onto a journey. And that journey took me down some windy roads and I went left and I went right. And in that, I said, you know what, what can I learn from my customers that could help me grow my business based on what just happened to me? So I started interviewing some of my top five, my top 10 customers on what they would like to see me do better. What can I improve upon? What am I doing right? And I urge people to think about that. Your customers are a wealth, a wealth, a wealth of knowledge. And they're there to help you. You just have to be willing to ask. And what I found out was three things. And I'll share those three things with you. And I apply it to this day in selling from the heart is this. We must connect better with our customers and our prospects. So what do I mean by connect? And in the world that we live in today, it, it's just so easy to connect. We live in a digitally driven world. We're mobily empowered and we're socially connected. It's never been as easy as it's been right now to connect with people but yet it's so difficult to truly connect with people. And what I mean by that is we have to dig below the surface. If we really want to get to know somebody, and when I say connect, that means eye to eye, face to face, belly to belly, heart to heart, hand to hand. And then we have to replicate that online, leveraging technology. And we can't hide behind it. We just live in a world today where technology is helping us build relationships, but we can't hide behind technology to build those relationships. Even in small towns, mid-sized towns, in large cities that I've grown up in, it doesn't matter. Relationships matter. It's how well that you dig in and connect. And what I mean by connect is we can have too many surface level conversations and too many surface level engagement. So if we really truly wanna to connect to somebody and we truly wanna to get to know who they are, we have to dig below the surface. And I like using the term, we have to pull back the covers. So for instance, right, we all crawl into bed at night. We don't lay on top of the covers. Maybe some do, but if you really want to get comfortable and cozy and have a great night's sleep, you pull back the covers. Same thing applies to how we build relationships. And I want you to think about that. How we connect matters. Second thing is how much you show you care. And what was really interesting is I was about a fourth of the way into writing Selling from the Heart. And I got called out on the carpet about my book and I was mentally prepared for it. And what was interesting is I had somebody connect to me and this person said, I want to know what you've put into selling from the heart. I want to know the case studies. I want to know the research and all this. There's a point behind this and just follow along with me is this person. I went on to say to this person, Hey, listen, I don't have a PhD, right? I'm throwing my hands up. I'm the most transparent person you'll probably ever meet because I just say what's on my mind, I don't hold back. And I said, I don't have a PhD, I don't have a master's, I have no degrees in human psychology, human behavior, nothing. I got a PhD from almost 30 years of corporate sales and getting the you know what kicked out of me. That's what I'm bringing to the market. I'm bringing sincerity and substance and heart to the market in a place that I think sorely lacking. And the person went on to say, as long as you're not deceiving people, and I say that because you must truly care for your customers and your future customers, and you can't deceive them. Then selling from the heart, I write a lot about, you must lead with your heart and not your wallet. When we, when we work with our customers, we must not look at them as dollar signs. We must look at them as human beings and we're there to help. 
And I always say this, and, and, I, and I've shared it many, many times, and I'll share it again, is I wasn't the smartest person out there. There was people that can outsell me. There was people that can outsmart me, but nobody was going to outcare me. And I want people to realize that in your marketplace is start showing how much you care and watch what starts to happen. And, and I think in the world that we live in today, there's three things that are going against us. And I don't care if, in my opinion, everybody's in sales, whether you like the term or not, everybody is in sales. But it's up to us what we do. And there's three things that we have going against us. And I want people to think about this. There's so much lack of trust going on that it's running rampant. So if you can connect better with people, if you can show them that you care, watch what starts happening to the trust. The second thing is, is people think we're full of you know what. And it's unfortunate, but it goes back to lack of trust. They just unfortunately don't believe anything that anybody has to say, there's always that Debbie Doubter syndrome. So why do you think people go to the internet and start looking at reviews and things like that? Because they doubt. And then the last thing is, is people are skeptical. They're skeptical about things and what you say as well. So I want people to think about that. If you can keep those three things in your community in the back of your mind and go, okay, how can I overcome lack of trust? How can I overcome people think I'm fully, you know what? And they're skeptical about it start connecting better, start caring better. And the last one is start showing compassion for people. And what I mean by that, and you know, April and, and already knows this, is if you love on your customers, truly love on them, they will love you back. And I'll share a quick story. I was with um, a new client last month in December in Los Angeles, and I was with a group of 50 salespeople. And they were all saying that relationships matter, and their customers matter and everything. I said, great, I'm not here to doubt it because relationships matter and customers matter. But when's the last time you've told one of your customers you love them? And I had just deer in headlights look. And I want people to think about this, is when's the last time you looked one of your customers in the eyes, went face to face, shook their hand and said, I appreciate you allowing me to serve you Thank you for allowing me to do business. Hey, you know what? I just wanted to say, I love working with you. I love what you're all about. You're a great person. Watch what starts to happen. And what was interesting about that is they doubted me. So I picked up my phone, right? I picked this phone up. It was on silent. I'm in this group. And I said, can I share with you a real live example? And they go, absolutely. So I put my mobile phone on speakerphone. I called up one of my clients as a VP of sales of a big company in South Florida in Miami Beach area. And I said, Harry, I just want to let you know you're on speakerphone right now with a group of 50 salespeople. Can you share with the group what I share with you, what I say to you right before we get off of every call? And Harry went on to say, you tell me you love me. And I said, thanks, Harry. Goodbye. And I had a bunch of people doing like this, right? Why am I sharing all this with you is we have to enhance customer experience. We have to share with our customers how much we care. We got to show them compassion and we have to connect better because I'm a firm believer. They're your customer until somebody comes along and provides a better customer experience. And I want us to really focus on that. So if you bring your heart to the forefront, you're sincere in what you say, you bring substance. In other words, when I say substance, I'm referring to business goods, right? I want you to start engaging with your customers in a way that's different. Start engaging in a business level conversation as well as a human conversation and start showing how much you care and watch what starts to happen. And I, I, was, I, was, I asked April if I could share a quick story. So I'm going to share a quick story because I actually walked through this this week. And it's been a rough week in my home office because we decided in the middle of the winter to replace our furnace and our air conditioning at the same time. So from Monday until Thursday afternoon, I had no heat and I was cranky. But what was interesting along the way in working with this company is they did a great job, but what they failed to do 
is enhance the experience every single day because they knew that I was cold, right? They knew that I was miserable. So what could they have done to enhance the experience? Just think about it for a second. How much would it have cost? Even though I have blankets in the house, how much it would have cost for somebody to, in that office to bring me over a blanket? Or bring me, hey, you know what? We can bring over one of our coats that our workers use. I'm sharing this. Though it may sound simple and silly, just, just think about that. And what was interesting is yesterday the job was done. And I go, interesting, that job was done. Here we are, it's Friday morning or Friday afternoon as, as, we're, as I'm on this. It was yesterday at about 3.30 Pacific Standard Time, the job was done. If they wanted to enhance the customer experience, what could they have done? They could have picked up the phone and called. Hey, Larry, we're complete. I just want to let you know, we really appreciate your business. Thanks for hanging in there. We know it was cold outside and it was a little rough. Why am I sharing this? Let's just think about this regardless of the work you're in. What could you all do to show how much you care, connect better, have compassion, but enhance that customer experience. And I'll ask you to think about this. When I'll use Disneyland as an example. What Disneyland experience are you bringing to your customers? And I want us to think about that for a moment. Disneyland year over year. Now I've grown up in Southern California my whole life. So I remember going to Disneyland as a kid and I couldn't wait. It, they always exceeded my expectations. So I want us to think about this in your community is everyone's always price sensitive. I'm a firm believer in this. If you continually enhance your customer experience, if you bring value, if you show how much you care, if you have compassion for human beings and you connect to them better, then you can always be able to increase price and not worry about saying, hey, my price is too high or something like that. And I want us to think about that because year over year over year, Disneyland raises their price. And year over year over year, the attendance increases. And all they've done is they've created a better experience. They've enhanced it from the minute you walk in until the minute you leave. And I want everybody to think about that. Is bring sincerity and substance to your customers and enhance the customer experience and watch what starts to happen. But we got to be able to look inside and believe it. And it's interesting because I'm a big, um, I'm a big Simon Sinek fan. And for those of you who may not know him, he wrote the book, Start With Why. Now I get a message every day. I sign up for his email blast. I watch his videos. I eat everything that he throws at me digitally. And I just want people to think about this. And he was, I watched a YouTube video a while back. This is probably about a month, month and a half ago. And he was sitting in a high back chair and he was sitting with a guy named Ken Blanchard and Ken Blanchard wrote the book, one minute manager the book's been out forever and a day. And they were fielding questions from the audience. And in, I can't remember what one of the questions were, but this was Simon's response. And he goes, if you believe in your message and you can deliver your message with clarity, with conviction, and you're concise about it, watch what starts happening to the people who follow you they start to become believers. And I want you to think about this as small business owners and entrepreneurs in your marketplace is do you believe your own message? And can you deliver your message in your marketplace? Clearly, concisely, and with conviction. And then I'll layer on top of that is if you can sprinkle in heart and sincerity, watch what starts to happen and how you grow your business because I'll leave you with this. And then I'll ask April if anyone's asked, has any questions is I challenge business owners and corporations around the United States and the world where I work is I'm a firm believer. The key growth to your business in 2020 is going to come directly through how well you connect and build meaningful, incredible relationships with your current customers. And then I'm going to layer one more on top of it. When I say connect, we must now be able to connect face-to-face -face, and we got to connect digitally with our customers. We live in a world that's just surrounded by social. We're on a social platform right now and how we're communicating doing this. I want you to start thinking about how I, and you can insert your name, right? 
yeah, I could just say, Larry, you know, I, Larry, how can I connect better with my current customers? How can I build meaningful, incredible relationships with my customers and stay top of mind to them in the world that we live in today? That means we must humanize ourselves. We must do that face to face. And furthermore, we must do that online. And we can't hide behind keyboards any longer. We have to leverage the power of technology to get our message out there, to stay top of mind. But furthermore, I want people to think about this. Your current customers and future customers, whether you believe me or not, are on social. They're, they're communicating on social. It's up to everybody on this call to listen to their customers because people, I'm a firm believer, people post things on social for one simple reason. They want to be heard. It's up to you guys to listen to them. Mm-hmm. So on, on that note, I, I appreciate it, April. I don't know if anyone has any questions. I could talk forever about this subject. <laughs> that, is, that is absolutely true. So we do have one or two. So Xavier Johnson owns the marketing agency here in McDonough. His question, and actually goes along with one other question, so I'm going to do them both at the same time because I think you have enough time. you got five minutes. So it says, can you speak to the making the transition from survival mode selling to serving mode? Then Stuart says, how long would you say the timeline is to see the customer go from cynical, distrustful questioning to letting down their walls and starting to believe you're really on their side? It, so it's, it's interesting. I'll, I'll try to wrap both of them in the same time in, in the same way. So j- just so I, I'm, I'm sh- clear, could just repeat the first question. Cause I, I already got the second one up cause I can roll right into it. So Xavier's transition from survival mode selling, I got to sell this today or else I'm going to starve to serving mode. Okay. So I, I, I think it, it all goes back to a couple things and um, I'm going to, pe- I'll peel this one back to just, and sorry, Xavier, this is, I, sometimes I get wacky when I say the things that I say, but I think survival mode, is, I always look back to this, it's, it's all about what's in your sales funnel. And I always tell people, if you want to have a healthy, ever-flowing sales funnel, you have to have a healthy, ever-flowing relationship funnel. That means that we have to be willing to have, do two things. We have to have time and we have to have patience and we have to be doing certain things every single day. And that means every single day I must prospect. That means every single day I must open a new relationship. That means every single day I must start a new conversation. That means every single day I must build my connections and I must enhance my network. If we do those simple things and we're disciplined to do it, watch what starts happening to your to your sales funnel. And I want to share this with you because I, th- I think it's going to help everybody. And I can stretch this just a little bit is I stepped out of corporate sales four years ago. So next week, it'll be exactly four years that I started my business. I went from high paying corporate sales job to doing this. So talk about taking a step backwards. I, I, I did it. I, I chose to take a step backwards because I wanted to share with the world what was in my heart and where I think the missing link is with sales. I stayed true to who I was. And yeah, you know, I had to, I had to eat beans and weenies and, and flour tortillas for a while. But I stayed true to, I had to open up a new conversation. I had to prospect every day. Everything that I shared with you guys and gals, I do every single day. And we have to, it's a mental shift. It's a mindset shift. It's a mindset shift. None of this is going to work if you don't develop your mind. If you don't believe that it's going to happen, it will never happen. And I just want, and, and I just want to let you know, I empathize with you guys because you know what? I'm a small business owner myself. I went from being an, an employee in a major corporation to being self-sufficient and chasing you know, money in the mailbox, just like everybody else has. I get what y'all are going through, but if you stay true to who you are, and you truly wear your heart on your sleeve and you go, you know what? I'm here to help. People sense it. it, it it's, it's hard to explain, but people will sense if you're true. And I'll leave you, and I'll, and I'll leave you this, and I'm going to go into the next one, is people smell sincerity the minute you open your mouth. They do. It's, it's something about humans can sense it, but they can also sense when you're in desperation mode. And when you're in desperation mode and starvation mode, 
nine times out of 10, what do you think starts to happen? You never get the sale because people sense desperation on your breath. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. I, I think most people would right. agree. Right. So I would say, I'd say Xavier, just stay true to who you are. Is it going to take some time? Yes. But if you do, if you do this every single day, the root, right? The root of all sales evil is lack of prospecting. If you guys are not prospecting every single day, opening new conversations, strengthening and building relationships, adding to your network, enhancing your network in the world we live in today, it's going to be difficult to grow your business. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's those rudimentary fundamental things we have to do every single day. But unfortunately, we get sidetracked by stuff. It's just, we got a time block better and we have to put that time on our calendar and say, we will do this and we will commit to doing it. And then can you just ask, just go back on the second one really quick. Oh yeah. So how long of a timeline is it to see the customer go from cynical, distrustful and questioning your angle before they start letting down their walls? That would depend on the person, right? I, you know, I, I think I'm not going to throw psychology or anything like this into it. But, you know, I came out of the office technology space. So talk about a space that's it's just full of broken dreams and broken promises and a right. revolving door with salespeople. They just don't trust and all that. All I did was the complete opposite. After I got schooled, I just did the complete opposite. And I started to engage. I started to ask different layers of questions. I started to engage. I started to peel back that, those covers. And it doesn't take time. And the uh -huh. reason why I'm going to say this, that it doesn't take time is if you stay true to who you are and you open the window to your authentic self, which means you got to do some inward self-reflection and say, you know what, yeah. I'm going to go, I'm going to go against the status quo on this and I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm telling you this people, you'll see somebody do this. <laughs> I just found somebody that gets me right. Right. It doesn't. You just, said, you just said page 37 of your book about branding yourself and making sure that you are who you say you are. So and, and, and this is and this is now I'm now I'm all fired up, April. Now I can go probably an extra couple minutes. But I, <laughs> I want people to think about this. They will in the world that we live in today. If if you truly are genuine and real and raw and relatable and relevant. So now you can tell I'm an alliteration freak. Cause I, everything's got to start with the same letter or a pastor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but let's think about this for a second and, and I don't care where you're at. Right. It could be in small town USA or it can be in, and I've had people test me on this because I go, you know what, Larry, this stuff just doesn't work because you've grown up your whole life in Los Angeles. You know, we live in a town of 10,000 people. None of this works. I said, you know what? It worked, probably worked better in your town than it would work in downtown Los Angeles because people yeah. got their guards up. But I'm telling you this, if you guys walk that genuine, real, relatable self face to face in your marketplace, that I'm going to encourage you and challenge everybody on this call. You must do that online. Yeah. The simple reason is people are going window shopping on you, whether you believe me or not. And if they think you're full of, you know what, and they don't trust you and they're skeptical, the first mm -hmm. place they're going to go is their first place of comfort. And it's going to be to their friends and it's going to be to father Google. And they're going to put your name or your company name in father Google and they're going to see what Father Google spits out. Yeah. And if they yeah. can start meshing it together, that will instantaneously bust those walls down. I know because I've lived through it. Yeah, that's true. So uh, one last, if you have a minute, um, advice for those that are in direct competition with each other. We have lots of HVAC guys. We have lots of roofing guys. We have lots of plumbers. We have lots of guys that make t-shirts. Make friends with those, uh, build relationships with your competitors, yes? Yes. So I came out of one of the most doggy dog, highly competitive industries that ever existed, the copier channel. <laughs> I had salespeople that were friends of mine from other companies. I connected to them. I knew who they were. Why, right? Yeah. To me, there's a couple of things. Your biggest competitor isn't your competition. Your biggest competitor is you 
status quo and an indecision from somebody on whether they're going to do business with you or not. Oh, yeah. And, and that's what I would urge people to say is, you know what? You can't control what your competitors do. All you can control is you and how you deliver you and your company to the best possible way. So I'd say, you know what? Have at it, you know, yeah. but you, but you got to, but you can't be paranoid. <laughs> and there's, there's so much rampant paranoia around there. Well, gosh, if I connect to my competitors and I start talking to my competitors, then what I said, you know what? doesn't really matter in the world that we live in today. Does it matter? No, they can find out anything they want to find out about you in a simple Google search. Sure. But, so well, I have but, a lot but of people, what's that? I have a lot of people tell me sometimes when I'm uh, showing them how quickly they can connect with, you know, obviously we, you and I both use um, putting cards in the mail, but regardless of what your mechanism or your device is, I have a lot of people who are like, well, I'm not going to load you know, my aunts, uncles, friends, neighbors, cousins, whatever, into my contact manager and send them cards because they're not really my customers. Okay, so saying, no, fill up okay, that no. anyway. Yeah, so so now here's what I want you to think about is your one degree of separation from your best sales opportunity. You guys just don't know it because you're not connecting the dots. Oh yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to date myself. And then, and then I, I mean, I could talk, but unfortunately I got to run <laughs> is now, okay. I'm going to date myself on this one. I remember as a kid, but you all will get this point. Hey, April, you like how I threw in that y'all? <laughs> You're so, in. You're totally in. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was a kid, I loved coloring books and more specifically, I liked connecting the dots on a coloring book. Because once I connected the dots, it formed a picture. Then I could color in that picture. So now where is Larry going with this, you know, old school example? Well, it's ever so prevalent today. I want people to start looking at connecting their customers' dots. How many people do you know in your customer base? How many people do you know in your centers of influence? How many people do you know in your future customers' networks? Start connecting the human dots color them in with conversation and build relationships because I'll leave you with this. And it's a really simple equation. It's how my brain works is this by connecting the dots, you connect the dots through asking engaging questions. When you can ask engaging questions, you'll engage in better conversations, better conversations, build relationships, building better relationships will create sales opportunities. And without sales opportunities, you'll never grow your business. Wow. I was typing as fast as you're right. <laughs> <You're fine. laughs> no, April, you got my cell phone number. You can just call me and I'll share See, it with you. I again. know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I cannot tell you enough how thankful we are that you spent time with us this morning. Um, even you're three hours behind us. And um, for us, it's lunchtime. People are getting on here. There's, we've got, you know, over a dozen at any given time. It's been up to 20 or so. And then this will be actually in our group um, in, in forever. And so people will be able to look at it and go grab your book. I'm going to put your podcast uh, link in here as well. I, it's something, you know, I don't even watch TV or listen to radio much anymore. I'm constantly listening to different podcasts and different <laughs> things that, things that are going to help me help others better. Um, and I'm just, I'm learning so much, but my goodness, I'm so thankful. Um, no, I, I, I love today. doing this and, and I, I hope you got some nuggets out of it. And, and anytime, if you want me to come back, I'd be more than happy to. Oh, don't say that now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure something out. All right. All right, Thank April. So All right. Much, you're very Larry. welcome. I Take really care. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thanks. Uh-huh.